So what I'm doing now is I am putting some orders on a broken stock. And I have so much confidence that, you know, since the stock is broken, I could do an Instagram live for an hour and it'll be okay. Following the process, guys. Process is key. Um, SPI is broken, so I'm hoping for SPI to bounce again to the 950 line. If it does, I'm in the money. So let's see. So I'll place some orders out there and we'll see what happens. But it's another stress-free day, guys. I love these stress-free days. I used to, when I was younger, I used to hate. Let me turn around. It's kind of cool. When I was younger, I used to hate boring days. By boring means there's no action. Uh, there's no action. There's nothing moving. There's nothing moving. And then what happens is, is there's stuff to move and then everyone gets bored. I get bored. I force trades and then I have to get out of the trade because I'm stuck now. So I'm fighting. I'm fighting. I'm fighting. You know, that's that's cool when you're young and all. When you're – but and then and you're gambling and you don't treat trading as a business or as a career. But if you – but once – you have trader maturity, that's what I call it. Trader maturity kicks in, you realize trading, you don't, I mean, if you want excitement, if you want to fight, if you want to be in the action and all that stuff, dude, be my guest. That's, in my opinion, that's gambling. I'm trying to teach everybody to treat trading seriously as a business. If you wanna have a good time, go somewhere else. Go to the clubs, go to the casino. But I am here to make money. I'm here to make my investing club members money. And then, um, you know, so that's a trader ma maturity now. So now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy being done by zombie time. I'm happy not having to fight and battle and say, I was down $100,000 and oh my God, look at me, dude. I'm the best fucking trader in the world. I, I'm, I'll never get stopped out. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm like, dude. That's not me anymore. Uh, when I was young, I was like that because I was bored. Really, I was just bored because uh, you know once you learn the process, trading is boring. You make money, not knock on wood. I mean, I'm not gonna jinx myself, but uh, the guys at MSA know when we lose money because we post it and we post our charts every day. Uh, just, I mean, all you need is four thousand dollars a day, guys, to make a million dollars a year on the average. So people go, oh, that's stupid. You can't make money every day. I'm not trying to make money every day, guys. I'm just trying to stick to my process every day. Some days will be more than 4,000. Some days will be less than 4,000. Some days will be a red day. But the point is, what I post is the average. All you need is $200 a day on the average supplemental income to change forever your life, guys. That's $25,000 extra income a year. Just think about it. When people think, oh, I want to make $25,000 in day trading. That means they think they have to up, trade up and down thousands of dollars a day to achieve that. But that's because they're gambling. They are gambling. But when you break down the math, it's only $200 a day. $200 a day. If you can consistently make $200 a day, that is $25,000 a year, guys. And I, you know, you, you cannot make 1000 a day, 10000 a day without first making $100 a day, then $200 a day consistently. And we tell people that every single time. Once that is instilled in your head, you'll see these numbers add up quickly. And that's how I started my career. That's how I, you know, that, that, that's what made me consistently profitable. The fact that I broke it down to reality. The reality is make a million dollars. You'll need to swing up and down every day, $50,000, $100,000 like some of these guys. I, I've always made more than most people, knock on wood, I mean, just making my simple three, four, five, six, seven, whatever thousand dollars a day. You know, I don't give back whatever the hell it is. So look at Alex. So Alex, so I mentored Alex the same exact way. And Alex, I mean, you look at Alex, it's like every day, you know, he posts his P&L. Compared to other guys on Twitter, it's not as impressive. I mean, you post 4,000, 5,000, it's not impressive. These guys are posting $100,000 a day, but then the next day they're losing $100,000, you know what I'm saying? And, but at the end of the year, you look back and go, what the fuck? Alex is up a million bucks already. A million bucks. And then how the fuck are you up a million dollars? And then you realize he's just making $4,000 on the average a day. And so whenever I look at my P&L, and I'm kind of pissed today because, I mean, Alex did very well today. He did me made 12 grand. 
I only made only made five thousand because I played pretty tight. I didn't ha I didn't have I did not locate the expensive stuff like the Go ED. I just traded SPI, and then I pretty much pass on ISIG stuff like that. But then I look at five thousand, and then and then I'm like, I that's a million dollars a year if I can keep doing this every single day, stress free. And look at my right now. I'm helping you guys. I'm helping MIC. Stress free, but then that's the thing. When you keep comparing yourself to others, I'm looking at other people, people's feet now. Forty thousand, fifty thousand. I'm like, fuck, that's not enough for me. But when I think about it, dude, my account, we reset our accounts to around thirty-five, forty thousand dollars. So me making five thousand dollars on a small account like that, you know, it's it's, it's not okay. The the key is the process. People say. Take what the market gives you. I say take what your process gives you. So whatever the process spits out, I'm happy with it. Even if it's red, guys, if I follow my process, my plan, and I'm red, I'm not gonna be mad because you know why? That's all I could do. Because I stopped out where I should stop out and the loss should be manageable, small manageable losses. And that's why it's okay. But if you do not, if, if you are not okay with taking a small manageable loss and you fight, and then you make money, it becomes a bad habit. And I say this all the time, when you break rules, you usually win the minimum. But when you break a rule and you lose, I guarantee you, you will lose the fucking maximum. Because when you're breaking the rule, you can't fix straight. You're on revenge trading, you keep adding to a loser. And what's gonna happen is, you know, if you don't have good risk management in terms of this fences set up, like we talk about max daily loss on broker level, things like that, you know, you will blow up your account. It happened to me all the time when I started out trading, you know, because what happens is like, I've always been able to take, get out of a loss because I kept on adding, except that at one time. <laughs> so think about it. If you got out of a loss, by keep adding to a loser, a loser, and then eventually you get bailed out and you win, you're like, yeah, I'm the fucking best. They can't shake me out. And it, and it happens, let's say five times in a row. It becomes a bad habit. You can think you can do it all the time. And then the sixth time it doesn't happen, you, your whole entire account is wiped the fuck out. And that's why I keep trying to tell people. It's not, you know, th there's, a, there's a point of being a consistently and profitable trader versus just a consistent trader. You could be a consistent trader, but still be not profitable. Because what happens is you can have five winning days in a row. And then the sixth day wipes out that entire week and then more. You can have an entire month of consistent days where you made money 30 days in a row. And then the next uh, black swan, whatever the hell you want to call it. People call it black swan, but it happens all the time. They call it black swan just to try to make themselves feel like, oh, it's just a lucky thing. No, dude, it's just the way your process is flawed because you should never, ever give back that much of a game because you should have your stops in you should have max daily loss and we teach one thing at, at mic that no one even talked about all these years right which is resetting your account if you reset your account that's the maximum you can ever lose even if you completely go nuts and call your broker and say fuck you get rid of my max daily loss i want to lose everything because i'm a dumb asshole you know i'm a dumb fuck Give me more, give me more. I promise I'll wire in the money tomorrow. And then, you know, so all you can lose is 35000 if you reset it. I'm just giving an example, right? But if you have a million dollars in an account, you can literally blow up a million bucks. I've seen guys blow up a million bucks. And so these are the, so treat your trading account. <laughs> I don't want to use this really bad analogy, but it's kind of like, you know, that, that's all you have. And so I, we, we tell people to set your daily max loss. Okay, whatever it may be. And, but but you know what the the if you I know people that call up their broker I've done this before dude I've called the brokers I get rid of this fucking shit I had a so on my account there's actually a max size so you can do that too you can call up your broker and set up a max size so that you don't fucking keep adding to infinity it's like it's like if you have an allowance and let's say your max size is three thousand shares. I'm just making this right. Three thousand shares. That's your allowance. You will be very frugal to keep adding. But if you know you keep adding forever, you just keep keep fucking adding forever until your buying power is done. And that's how people blow up. 
Yeah, I censored myself. I was going to say, treat your training account like your virginity. <laughs> you, you don't want to bend over and get your, fucked up the ass because, you know, you, don't, you didn't set the proper, you know, lock your door at night. <laughs> no, I was going to use some analogy like that, but <laughs> this is, this is a mentor maturity. <laughs> yeah, you have your trader ma maturity. Now you have your mentor maturity. I'm also trying to curse less. <laughs> I just, so I'm just laughing my head because you know, I was comparing your account to your virginity. You, you know, you have fucking well, whatever virginity it may be. For me, it's anal virginity. But anyways, I'm not gonna talk about that. I've been fucked up the ass many times with bad risk management when I started. I do not want you guys to go there because what's gonna happen is the more times you get fucked up the ass, it becomes more loosey goosey, right? And so now you'll be like, oh, I got fucked up the ass so many times. It doesn't feel pain anymore. I'm used to getting fucked every week up the ass, right? And that's the problem with bad habits, okay? You do not want to start with bad habit. That's why, that's why the traders that just started out trading, new traders, go to MIC, they learn the good habits right away. That's what it is. You, it's very hard to unlearn a bad habit. Right, it's very hard to unlearn that habit. Right now, you know my sphincter is getting. I don't want to talk about that, but I haven't been fucking there for a while. Knock on wood, I don't want to. I set fences to my account that you can never fucking break in. I'm, I'm wearing, I'm wearing a fucking bear trap underwear, fucking, so no one comes close to my ass. <laughs> Anyways, um, what am I doing right now, Alex? What am I supposed to talk about? Um, a, a few action items, okay? We we just we just promoted two. Members who joined to to moderator. One person is Claude. Claude, he's an excellent swing trader. He's killing in swing trading. And so, and another person is John, options. So now we have a swing trader on top of Tay, who's an other moderator and other people swinging, as well as John, options. So we have an options room, if you guys do not know. We have a large cap and options room, specifically the large caps and options. And so we have guys in there consistently profitable. John is really cool because last week we, I brought him on and he actually quit his full-time job to be a full-time trader. But you know what a full-time trader is? A full-time trader doesn't mean you sit down at your desk trading 24 hours a day. A full-time trader just means, hey, that's what I do for a living. Doesn't mean that you can't do other things. You know, you can supplement your income. So my whole thing to everybody is like, most people do not need to quit their job, guys. Stop thinking that you need to quit your job. Stop thinking you need to make a million dollars to change your life. Supplement your income. Alex trades one hour a day. I stick around, because I like trading, but at the same time, it's mostly to help members. I can, I can be done with, like Alex, but I'm around with MIC to educate, to mentor, things like that. And so, eventually one day, you know, all the moderators are gonna do my job for me. You know, it, it, that, that's what mentorship is, guys. And so, it, it, it's not a, competitive environment at MIC. And that's the problem. You have to get this competitive bullshit out of your head. If you think that not sharing information is gonna help you, how the fuck is that not gonna help you? You, you, you think your fucking 2,000 share size is gonna be any fucking shit? You know what I'm saying? But, but what happens is this. If you mentor someone, you help someone, like the people at MIC, they always help one another. That's, what, that's awesome. It means that you understand the topics. You understand the concepts. And so, unless you can teach someone and mentor someone the concepts, you really don't understand it. And that's why a lot of these traders, they have these complex fucking shit, but they have no process and routine. So what I wanna talk about today is process and routine. And this is what enables us. So I posted something very interesting on Twitter. It's, you know what, when I post a chart now, I have, I have a bunch of other members posting and replying. Oh my God, we train the same exact thing. We, you got the same lines that they do. Uh, that's not by coincidence, guys. That's by, that's, that, you know, that's by design. We have a system in place, a process that's repeatable, that's consistent, that everybody can do. And people are doing it. So we, so people will always say, well, if you're teaching such a great thing, why aren't your students making money like you? At the end of the day, I can give you the best strategies in the world, but it's up to you to be disciplined, not to have FOMO, to respect risk control, all that thing. And those that do end up with the same exact charts as Alex and I. And it's been proving every single day. Every single day, you guys, the guys at MIC watching right now, you, you, you can validate this. Right? It's like you, you guys are getting the same charts as I do now. And you know what, man? People like FaZe even doing better than I do. 
They're, they're stealing my words like Faye, and they're holding out longer. So I'm actually learning. I'm telling you guys, a guy like me, who's been trained this long, and, and was this successful doing this, is still learning every day. You know, what I used to do is I used to bang out big size, get out in and get out very early because, you know what, that was guaranteed money for me. But now I'm thinking like, oh shit, why don't I just hold a little piece longer? So, so people like Harry or someone, was it Harry? I think it was Harry or James was like, what the hell, Val? You've been holding your, some positions a lot longer. And so I'm learning, guys. I am learning just like the people at MIC. I'm learning from them all the, the good things that, that I can incorporate into my own process. To, you know, everybody's process could be tweaked. Just because I do one thing and I teach one thing doesn't mean that you can take the best from what I do, take the best from what Alex does, take the best from Faye or whoever you want to take it from and then incorporate it in your own because training should be very personalized. You know, I, I'm a control freak, man. I, I, I can't hold shit overnight. If I hold shit overnight, I'm going to be refreshing my screen at, at my desk 24 hours because I'm like a, a nervous wreck. You know, so a process is everything. So now I create a new process. I'm waking up even early. I'm waking up at 3.30 a.m. right now, guys. 3.30 a.m. And you know what process does for you? It eliminates guesswork. Should you be in this stock? Should you be in that stock? What does your process say? So that, that thing, it eliminates all my guesswork. And after a while, we, I talked about this early, it becomes like an in instinct. It's instinctual. It becomes Trading like a reflex. You can look that up because I kind of termed that way back on Twitter. Trading as a reflex. So it becomes a reflex. Someone throws a ball in your face, you're going to move your head up. But you know what happens with people that are stubborn in trading? You get a ball thrown in your face and you, you keep eating that. You're like, I can eat a few more bullets. That's what bad risk management is like. You do not want to take a bullet to your face so many times. That's what adding to a loser is. If you know you're wrong, get the fuck out. Stop out. We're the only ones that advocate hard stops for a reason. A ball is coming to your face. A stock, you're going to get ran the fuck over. These guys are sitting here getting taken out and getting hit in the face because they're like, I'm going to revenge trade. I have a million dollars in my go. I am the best fucking motherfucking trader in the world. You see? Oh my God, dude. Legendary. You know what the fuck you want to be? It's, like, it's the dumbest concept. Take your fucking loss. Reattack. But the thing is, it works for them. If it works for them, fine. But the point is, it will not work for you. You do not have a million dollars in your fucking account. You know, the moment you fucking lose a few thousand bucks, I guarantee you're going to be shitting in your pants, shaking your boots, and you're going to be stopping out at the very top. You will always stop out unless you know what the hell you're doing. Even though you know what you're doing, you still get stopped out if the money is big enough to, to affect it, right? So, so that's the whole thing, man. It led me to this because uh, one, one comment. Uh, one of our friends, Alex and I, I saw a picture of a, someone gambling $30,000 on roulette. This guy knows uh, gambling 30000 on the roulette because he's making insane amount of money. But it doesn't, doesn't matter. And so I was telling Alex, you know, I was like, when I go to the casino, <laughs> I'm scared. I, I, this is a fact. I'm scared betting even 100 bucks. 100 bucks, 200 bucks is probably the max I've ever wagered on Blackjack besides doubling down once I get the hundred dollar bet, right? And I'm making millions, right? And uh, on that that time, right? This time, what is it fucking it may be, right? I mean, you know, but I'm shaking my boots over a hundred bucks. That's the reason this is gambling. I'm not in control. That's my personality. I need to be in control. Even a hundred dollars would shake my boots. I don't gamble. The last time I went to Las Vegas, I never stepped into a table game. You know, I just went to eat and stuff like that. And so I just play for fun. And so but why should I fucking gamble? I'm, I day trade. And when I started day trading, I thought day trading was gambling. And that's why I lost. I thought hey, it was so fucking random that I'm going to get lucky. I'm just always looking at that fucking lucky shit. That's why people pay options, right? They don't want to get lucky, make a 10 bagger, you know, and get retired. What the hell is this? Um, then I realized, like, dude, trading is not gambling. If you have the right process, you can pick when to enter the stock. So I'll give you an example. Imagine if you... Imagine if you can go to uh, Vegas and play blackjack and never have to bet until you see all the cards. I'm going to see my cards and, and then I will bet. I, I can't see the, the dealer cards, obviously. Um, if I see my card, if they let you see your cards, both of them, blackjack, before you bet, you think you will lose? Yeah, you lose once in a while because you got blackjack, whatever the hell it may be, right? Because your cards are, your cards are dealt. But you would only enter 
good starting hands. If you drew a 14, you wouldn't fucking bet. Full, full, full. Some people will gamble and enter 18. You know? And so you play by the odds. For me, I'm a more risk taker. I may take the 18 bet. But for Alex, 20 or nothing. Keep folding. Keep folding until I get that 20. And 20 still get beat by 21 all the time. So risk management is always still going to be there. So trading is like playing blackjack where you get to see both of your cards before you bet. And that is the setup. That is the process. And so if the process is there and you have an A-plus setup, for me, that's a 20 blackjack hand. You, you bet larger. But, I mean, for me, I never go all in. I still need to put proper risk because 20 still gets beat by 21. The dealer can have 21. They could draw to 21 and you would lose. Okay? And so think about it. Every time you enter, before you enter a trade, think about that. Is What kind of blackjack hand is this? I hate this A-plus setup bullshit because it's like, what the fuck is A-plus, right? As a nation, I always get A-plus in score. <laughs> Everything is A-plus. But, uh, uh, but um, <laughs> so you think about blackjack hand. Is this an 18 hand? Is this a 19? Is this a 20? And remember, 20 gets beat. Okay? And so when you, so if you keep that in mind, it will help you avoid FOMO. FOMO is like, oh, it's close enough. It's an A minus, it's B plus. You're like, what the fuck is that? But then it, for me, it's kind of like you, you got related to blackjack. Oh shit, this is a 17. 17 is kind of marginal. And if it's a marginal, it's a coin flip. And I don't want a coin flip. A coin flip is gambling. 50-50 is gambling, guys. You, I, I, I would need at least an, 75%, 80% chance of winning, you know? And so 18 gets beat a lot too. For me, 18 and 19 is very similar. You get beat a lot. And so if you want to play really tight, guys, so on days I don't feel good enough, I don't feel good, like, you know, I, I only wait for the 20, the blackjack 20. Those are the, what they call A+, plus, but this is a 20 hand. So today I, I traded not many stocks. So I, S, I, G, to me, it was 17 because so I couldn't figure it out. Even though it paid off, it paid off, but it's still 17 because I couldn't figure it out. Whereas an SPI was a 20. And so that, that you can bet more. But for me, you know, I'm playing kind of conservative. So I didn't go all in, of course. I, I, I was probably still half size because at that line, to me, it was still not a 20. So everyone's definition of a 20 is different. But for me, I realized, hey, you know what, man? You have to understand your personality. Are you a 18 and 19 guy or only a 20 guy? And so that's, that's, that's what it is. So think about every setup, every stock as such. And if you do that, I guarantee you, I think your mind will change in the way if you should enter the stock or not. And always remember, man, risk management. These guys, a lot of these guys, they go all in thinking they can never be wrong. I have a 20, how can I lose? Oh my God, dude, how many times have we lost with 20 and the, the guy pulled 21, right guys? So, you know, that's why I wanted to talk to you about today, guys. Look at Alex's um, p &L. It's just, today was a great day for him, 12 grand. That's where it was 18,000. But most of the other days, we just, you know, non-eventful. But non-eventful is like 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. But then at the end of the year, you're like, what the hell? That's a million dollars. Okay, so I want you guys to keep that in your back of your head. And and we are the only ones being realistic about this because you know I hate you know the reason I bring this up because man you have a stock like G O E D people are pumping and dumping that like crazy and the people are chasing and so this came about because because I'm like dude you watching this right now you can be lazy and want alerts and chase these things or you want to be self sufficient you know being self sufficient may take you longer may take you a few months to learn. Uh, but that is the only way you learn. So when I post my charts at MIC, there's a lot of people that have been self-sufficient now because they don't, you know, they, they don't get alerted. But the thing is, you look at my charts, you look at Alex's charts, you look at Alex's watch list, and you reverse engineer this. So in a way, we do have alerts, guys. It's in the form of a watch list, and the watch list has the lines in it. But it's up to you to be disciplined and to wait for the lines because the lines may never hit. And so that's the thing. A lot, of, a lot of times it won't hit, and people will go. Oh uh, shit, man, I'm gonna get FOMO. I don't wanna miss this plan. That's how you lose. That, you know, like, what if the 20 blackjack hand will never come? So that's why people are entering at 17 blackjack hands, right? But think about it, 20 will come. It's just you just have to wait, you know? So that's, that's your thing. But then there's a balance between never ever feeling, uh, feeling um, 
getting a fill or missing the trade altogether. So there's a balance and that's where risk management comes in, guys. So um, I want to bring one person on. Who, raise your hand. Who should we bring on, Alex? Yeah, I've been trying to exercise. So I think I've been you know, kind of looking a little younger, <laughs> being skinnier, I guess. Raise your hand, once again, otherwise we will end it and um, let you guys go. But um, I, I love bringing someone on. It could be anybody, you don't have to be, it could be, a, I would gladly bring a troll on. <laughs> I've turned many trolls into believers. Let me see. Otherwise, give us Day of the Nation. Here, Alex, where are you? Here, I'm going to bring Alex on. Talk about his week so far. Let me look back and see what the stock's at. Stock's still the same. Nothing filled. Hey, Alex, where are you? <laughs> Francisco the trader. All right, man. I, I, I'm um, I'm gonna bring up some random person on. Francisco the trader. Oops. All right, let me bring on um, right investment. Let's see if he wanted to go right investment. Hey, how you doing? What's up, my friend? I, this is the first time I brought you on. I, I've never. Yeah. You know, we never yeah, met so. Tell everybody who you time. are and where you're from and all that good stuff. So I live in New Jersey. I'm from Dominican Republic. And um, actually, just you just pop up. And I, I was like, who is this guy? So I started watching. And some of the stuff you're saying makes a lot of sense. So what do, you do, what do you do for, for a living? Are you, are you just uh, getting into trading new? or? I, so I started trading about a year ago. Um, Dominican Republic, that's exactly where I'm at. Uh, oh, you live there right now? Guy. So I started trading um, about a year ago. I didn't know what to do. I started studying. I was losing a lot of money. I was doing really, really, really bad. And then um, I started reading some stuff, and um, one of the guys was saying sell puts. And I'm like, what is that? So I started looking into it, and I got really good at selling puts because <laughs> it's high price. High probability, right? So, um, <laughs> until until what happened? That one loss. <laughs> What's that? Until what happened? You get that one big monster loss. <laughs> no, 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 no. Actually, no, because that's I started selling puts uh, recently, right? Not too long, probably maybe like four months ago. It's I'm gonna show you uh, later on, but um, it's pretty good so far. I mean, I'm not. I don't have a lot of experience like you do, um, but yeah, wait, and I, you never so, stop learning, right? So, yep. so I'll, I'll just give you a quick summary on that. So, selling puts is high probability, yes, until you lose. And that one loss will bankrupt you. And that's how a lot of these companies bankrupt. So, what you're doing is you're doing a naked sell. And so, if this, so what happens is you're making income, small income, but it's consistent. But imagine if you hold it overnight, you wake up, that stock gaps all the way up, game over. You've just lost maybe 1,500% of your, your puts because you have to cover no, it. No, so, no. I'm, I'm selling the, the secure puts. So I'm not like oh, okay. not, not messing with like uh, penny stocks. It's yeah. like, like for example, Apple, right? Um, I'm selling you own the, the stock. Puts. Yeah. So if I get a sign, I own It's a cover. It's a cover. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, okay, so, so yeah, you're covered, okay. I thought you were doing the naked sell. You're the, the naked oh, sell. No. <laughs> no, I don't want to take those chances. Yeah, no. yeah, you just, yeah, I, I understand the concept. So, yeah, so what, what happens is this. You, I mean, you, what, what, what we teach is applicable across all types of what I call asset classes, which is equities, which is um, options, you know, large cap, small cap. So, I mean, have you been watching on the YouTube channel? I haven't watched your, your YouTube time. No, not yet. No, I got to get on it. Okay. So this is good. So what, so we, so a lot of guys out there, you know, in your position, you're starting out, maybe you don't have money to, or if you do. So my whole point is this, if you're good at this from the beginning, you imagine how much, 
quicker or even better you could be if you get mentored the right way. And so a lot of times people, you know, this is, this is the thing that happened to me before too, because I was a very, or I thought I was a very intelligent guy and I don't need any help. <laughs> you know, I, I started out doing well, but then after three years, I struggled the same thing. After three years, I was very good. I made, I was very good right from the beginning. But the problem I had was I would be up for every day. I would be up every day for like two weeks. But then that one loss wiped my whole account out. Oops. You know, it happens all the time. I could not understand why. There are a lot of things that a new trader will never know. Even a guy like me was trading three years when I started. I didn't even know about all this stuff. I didn't know about a hard stop. No one taught me. I didn't know about taking money out. I didn't know about uh, support and resistance. I, you know, you, you kind of learn on your own. You kind of hack along. And so when I look back, I realize, like, if I had just been mentored, but back then it was different. It was, it was just, imagine this like 20 years ago. There was no online community, none of that stuff. And so I had to learn on my own, and my learning curve was so long. And I'm just thinking back, imagine if I had MIC back then. Oh, my God, dude. How much, how much money would I – how much time and money would it have been? Because it's the same repeat pattern all the time. I couldn't understand, like, why would these stocks – I would be up so much in one day. I'll give you an example. Like, when I just started trading, I had, like um, – so I was up on this stock. Let me let me see how much it was. It was like I had I had like eighteen thousand in my account, or whatever, and it it got up to fifty thousand in like two hours. Okay, and then you know what I thought in my head all that time? I wasn't happy. I was like, I was so pissed. Why did I go all in? I knew it. I knew it. And so what I did was like I was like, please go down. Please go down so I can add more. Please go down. So as the stock went down. I was up like 30 grand on like an $18,000 account, right? As the stock went down, I was like, yes, I'm going to go all in and use margin and use margin. Because how could I be down? I'm up so much money. So I kept on adding all the way down. Next thing you know, holy fuck, I'm even. Add more, add more, add more. Oh, fuck, I'm red. How could I be red? Add more, add more. Oh, fuck. Okay, so what happens is this? It's okay. I'm going to keep holding it. I'm already, you know, what can I lose, right? Oh, shit, I'm down half. Oh, fuck. I'm down half. Fuck, might as well just hold it. I, mean, you know, I, I lost too much money already. Now I'm down to 25% of my account. I'm like, fuck, I should have sold what I was half. And so the max pain hits. I sell. It's always at a dead bottom. Dead fucking bottom. And the stock bounces back up, of course, right? And it's the same routine. I'm thinking, why the fuck did this happen? And it happens all the time. So in the beginning, you know, you, you, you learn about greed and stuff. And I never knew to take money out. I never knew a stock could keep going down like that. I never knew about dilution. I never knew there were people with shares that were dumping it. I, you know, I didn't know there was manipulation or algos. So it's just stuff that you wouldn't know. I didn't know like certain time frames to, to, that, is, that is good for a long or a short. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of things that, you know, I was doing well, but I was always fucking up. And so, and, and then when I get bored, I would do a bored, boredom, random trade. And that's how I blow up my account. And so that's why, you know, having community of people helps. And so, like right now, I would be so bored. I would be making all stupid trades. But now talking to you, helping people, you know, avoiding all the boredom stuff. It's true. Uh, so thanks, man. I hope to see you in MIC one day. Keep doing what you're doing, my friend. For sure. Thank you very much. YouTube. Check out the, the free YouTube. It's a My Investing Club on the YouTube channel. We have a lot of free. Uh, and and one, one last thing. It's not just the technical aspect of trading. It's the mental that's very important. You see what I'm saying? It's a mental aspect to, 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 and so we teach both. And so the YouTube will tell you a lot of the mental aspects you have to watch for. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys. Do you have, do you have like yeah. a WhatsApp group or? No, uh, we, we don't. No. no. Okay. Yep. But that, if you're interested, in text great. Tosh, text Tosh. And we, we, you know, you, you can check us out for a month and see if you like it. So, okay. you know, we, oh, we, you we have the YouTube. YouTube. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Thanks, my friend. Thanks lot, Good luck in the Dominican, man. Uh, I was there nice before. I love it. It's so much fun. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Well, that'll be the end of that, guys. Um, thanks for joining, watching Text Tosh. Is there anything else, Tosh or Alex? Tomorrow, Tosh has his free webinar at 2 p.m. market time. He will post it on Twitter. YouTube Live is a free webinar hosted by Tosh every Wednesday. Hey, next week. JJ, you're going to get on, man. I've been looking for you. So JJ here raised his hand. Well, we, well, let's save that for next week, JJ. This is going to be a good one. I, I want to devote the whole hour to you. Uh, Mr. JJ there, 
my God, man, he's been training for a while with us. Um, I've seen the progress. So I want to know in his mind how he switched over. So he just, he did a, I, I just um, go to the Instagram testimonial. I just posted him. He just had his second withdrawal from his account. Amazing. You know, like we, we have advocate people taking $10,000 after they hit a certain amount. So this is his second withdrawal. Congratulations, man. It's been a long journey, but he something clicked in his head. And so next week, stay tuned next week. I'm going to bring him on for the full hour. All right. Thanks, guys.